Welcome to the Own It Paracast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 140, Building Connection with Assertive Behaviors. As you know, all month we've been talking about healthy connection and all the ways that we need to connect in our relationships to feel safe and accepted and loved and to be loving and encouraging to others. I want to finish up this month with one of my favorite topics, and that is assertiveness. I think it's an important aspect of connection because I think being assertive is integral to our self-esteem, for setting boundaries, and negotiating in our relationships. If we cannot do this, then the communication we have with others is not emotionally safe, not only for us, but for them as well. So I think assertiveness over the years has gotten a bad rap sometimes. I think we assume it means bossy and getting your way and putting your foot down or up some orifice. And sometimes, yes, sometimes the context may require that we do that. But I think little attention is focused on some really great aspects of assertiveness and also what it isn't. To me, assertiveness is not aggressive. It's not controlling. It's not passive aggressive, it's not toxic, it's not manipulative, and therefore it's not emotionally dishonest. Assertiveness is not about blurring boundaries. It's not about getting your way at the expense of pushing others away while you do that. It isn't snarky, it doesn't use sarcasm. The biggest thing to remember about assertiveness is that the focus is not on them or the situation, The focus is kept about you, okay? So in order to do that, we have to talk about detachment and boundaries, which we talk about almost every other episode because they're so important. So if something's going on with someone, do first things first and do the who owns what on that whiteboard in your head. What's yours? What are your feelings, your thoughts, your choices, your behaviors, your needs? your boundaries, and what belongs to the other person. Then, if you've been listening long enough, you know what to do next. You detach from what's theirs. And you focus instead on, what do you need? What do you need to do, perhaps? Do you need to grieve? Do you need to come to acceptance? That there's nothing you can do to change it? Do you need to set a boundary? Do you need to choose to compromise? Do you need to walk away? You own your choices here. No one is making you do anything most of the time. We are always choosing, I think, even when we feel like it's their fault. And yeah, people can do some awful stuff to us. But at the end of the day, we still have to make some choices in terms of how we want to take care of us. Well, I think first we need to focus on deserving and self-trust. You first must feel and believe that deep down you deserve to stand in your truth or you won't be able to. Doing the work on this with help is crucial. You have to believe you first before you can come across as strong and genuine and you won't be able to stand up for yourself when challenged if you are ambivalent about what's true for you. Self-trust comes and joins with this because we work on self-trust like we've talked about by honoring what we think, feel, and need and what we believe and what we believe in and what our values are. And we don't let others talk us out of our reality because they can't handle it. So there's a lot of preliminary work to being assertive in the moment with someone. There's a lot of deep down internal work about our self-esteem, about what is deemed healthy and what isn't, and lots of practice with boundaries. All right, so let's compare and contrast some healthy and unhealthy behaviors just to remind ourselves what assertiveness is about. You know, unhealthy is someone who has poor boundaries. 
around their emotions, their time, their space, their sexual privacy, maybe their money, as opposed to an assertive person has healthy boundaries. They set them and they respect those of others. There are no double standards. Unhealthy is a lot of denial and pretending, wishful thinking, not wanting to look at red flags about a person or a relationship, perhaps. As opposed to healthy is gut level honesty with ourselves and with others, not denying the truth. Unhealthy is no sense of the other is separate or deserving of understanding. As opposed to having empathy and genuine caring for another person when they're expressing themselves vulnerably and in a healthy way. Unhealthy is denying my feelings and also not being able to honor those of others because of that. As opposed to being assertive, I'm in touch with my own feelings and I'm aware of unhealthy reactions, like acting out my feelings, as opposed to processing them in a healthy way and dealing with them. Unhealthy is being the only one who knows what is right, even though we think that's true. Healthy, assertive people try to be more humble and teachable and tell themselves they may not know everything or have all the answers, because oftentimes we don't. Manipulation of others has nothing to do with assertiveness. In fact, assertive people work with others honestly, being open and vulnerable and being respectful. Unhealthy is black and white thinking and a lot of rigidity. It's either perfect or it's horrible. As opposed to when you're assertive, you learn how to be open and flexible and decide ahead of time what is non-negotiable. Like maybe your values are non-negotiable, but other things you can be flexible around. Unhealthy people blame others for their unhappiness and all the bad events that are happening around them. Healthy people understand and take responsibility for maybe getting themselves into this mess in the first place or not saying no when they needed to or setting boundaries along the way. And finally, unhealthy people create drama and chaos, both knowingly and unknowingly. I think there can be a lot of subconscious chaos we can create by procrastinating, not dealing with problems, avoiding conflict, as opposed to Assertive people solve problems and they confront. Even when it's hard, they confront themselves, they confront others, they confront situations. So assertiveness is all about taking responsibility in my mind. Taking responsibility for the boundaries you need to set. Not wishing and hoping that other people would just act right so you don't have to. That is actually a very common thing. So don't feel bad if you have wished for that sometimes. Just because it's common doesn't mean it's healthy. You're responsible for everything you say and what you do. You're responsible for allowing others to define your reality at times and not standing in your truth. You're responsible for your intentions and your motivations that fuel your behaviors all day long. What are you really trying to do in the moment? You're responsible for placing yourself in unhealthy situations. Even though, as we've talked about many times on the show, oh, you had a lot of help getting there. You would have made far better decisions had you had a better environment growing up and what have you. But you're responsible for removing yourself if and when possible, if that is the only healthy option. And being really intentional about who you put in your life afterwards. You're responsible for your honesty with yourself and with other people. That's a big deal. Emotionally honest. And you're responsible for your life, for your happiness, where you want your life to go, what you want it to look like and feel like. So those are the concepts of assertiveness. We stand in our truth. We stay on our side of the street. We take responsibility for whatever's going on for us. And part of the preliminary work is figuring out what that is, getting really honest with yourself. I tell clients all the time, as you go through your day and your week, take moments to stop and ask yourself, what's going on? Why am I feeling this? Why am I thinking this? Why does that make sense? And then what do I need? What are my boundaries? How do I take care of me? 
So some of the characteristics of an assertive person, we've talked about before on the show, but I think they bear repeating. You know, assertive people are firm and direct. It's like, hey, I really like that, please. Or can you please drive more slowly in the rain? Or I'm sorry, that doesn't work for me. But I can do next week. Unfortunately, I can't help you out. I'm a little busy today. Things like that. It's firm. It's direct. It's an I statement. It's not beating around the bush. It is not being vague. And it's not being emotionally dishonest. It's very genuine. It's not reactive, though. It's not like, I can't believe you asked me that. Don't you know how busy I am? That's that passive-aggressive stuff we've been talking about. Don't do that. Don't put your stuff on other people. You know how you hate when they put theirs on you. Assertive people don't blame other people. They take full responsibility for their feelings and their needs and their choices and their behaviors. They say things like, I realize I'm upset about the outcome, but but I need to figure out what I'm going to do here. Not what other people need to do, what I need to do. They have no desire to be a victim anymore. They say things like, I've brought this on myself because I didn't want to see the reality of their behavior a long time ago. Assertive people focus on here and now in the moment. They don't bring up old stuff unless there is a distinct purpose to reveal an old hurt that is continuing to hurt or a pattern of behavior. They can express their needs and feelings for the most part calmly and easily because they've gotten it straight with themselves. This is what I feel. This is what my truth is. So they don't need to act out to tell you about it. Assertive people, for the most part, are confident about who they are. They've made peace with that. They've come to acceptance, and they're working on things with themselves. That's why they can speak firmly and make eye contact with you. They're not hiding anymore. And they also recognize and want to organically respect you and have empathy for you because they've done the work to do it for themselves first. So getting things straight with you, who you're bringing to the table is crucial. Honoring what you think and what you need and what you feel and what your boundaries are. When it is important to step up and say something, to advocate for yourself, to be honest with your answers, to not be passive aggressive, to not put your stuff on other people owning your part. And ironically, the more you practice being assertive in the moment or after the moment when you go back, like we've talked about, you say, you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't know if I can help you out on Saturday. I really have a lot on my plate. I'm so sorry. Every time you do that, you believe yourself more. When other people do it with you, you may be disappointed in the moment, but you'll trust them more later, won't you? Because you'll know the real deal. Being assertive means our insides match our outsides. We're not playing any games. We're not trying to control any outcomes. We're actually confident enough to take the risk that there might be conflict. The other person might get pissed. They may not like you. I think unhealthy people may not like you in the moment. They may feel threatened because you're doing something that they deem rude or selfish because their paradigm is passive aggressive, aka never ask for what you need. Don't be forthright and direct because that could hurt someone's feelings. Being assertive, you detach from people's feelings. You don't try to hurt them on purpose, but you let go of another's reaction. You're calm, you're grounded, you have an I statement. You stand in your truth, you detach from whatever is going on with them, and you hold your ground. That's important. You have to know what your boundaries are. You have to know what your needs are and know that they're not wants, they're needs. And you have to know what your choices are, like what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do. Maybe where you're willing to compromise and where you're not and why. And that's backed up by your values and things that really matter to you. 
things that you believe in. You take responsibility for problem solving, for what you need to do to take care of yourself, and you detach from what other people need to do for themselves. Some of this happens organically as you do the work on yourself and love yourself more, as you heal old trauma, as you do enough reframing of the distortions that you grew up with about yourself. You trust yourself more because you're not lying to yourself anymore. And you're starting to be more honest and tell that truth that you tell yourself to the world. Genuine people will really appreciate this and really connect with you. Disingenuous people might have a problem, but that's just more information for you. If we want to connect with others in loving and compassionate and honest ways, we also need to be able to negotiate needs and to set boundaries with others. There needs to be detachment. There needs to be healthy separateness. People need to be able to stay in their truth. So today we wrapped up the month and talked about how to become more assertive in your communication with others. We talked about the difference between unhealthy and healthy perspectives and behaviors. And we focused on standing in your truth and taking responsibility for everything you think, feel, need, do, and choose, for your own problem solving, for how you brought yourself to this situation and what you want to do now. What is really, really true deep in your heart? Thank you for joining me today. May you stay in your truth and trust yourself this week. Find something good in yourself and in someone else. Be sure to check the show notes at ownitpowercast.com if you haven't signed up already. Thank you guys for the great feedback on the newsletter. Love to hear it. All right, so pay it forward. Keep focusing on you, and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.